Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that hopefully you're watching this in black and white so you can't see the delightful Technicolor glory of today's look. Uh, if I've forgotten, welcome to the Technicolor glory that is today's look. But uh, I'm sure you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description. Today is a look filmed with a gift from a subscriber. It was a BoxyCharm exclusive palette. So, if you want to find out, well, I'm probably going to have said it in the title, but if you want confirmation of which palette it is that I've used today, and you want to see this look, this fabulously beautiful look in Glorious Technicolor, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, because here it comes. Okay, that was weird. Genuinely don't know why it did that. Okay. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I don't know if it will show up on the film, but my viewfinder just went down to black and back up again. Very strange. Mm. Anyway, new headband covered in unicorns. As soon as my godchildren see that, they're going to be fighting me for it. Well, the girls will anyway. But this was a present from a friend of mine at Christmas. She gave me a load of hair bits because she's like, you're the makeup guru, I'm the hair guru, here's some hair bits. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, but what this is actually about, I put up an Instagram post uh, a couple of weeks ago now. Because I'd seen a lot of people um, that got BoxyCharm in America. And it had got a, a cut down version of the Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Storm palette, which it was called Celestial Thunder, which was the cut down version. And I've got to be honest, the cut down version interested me more than the, the full size did. But you couldn't buy the cut down version, it was, it was specifically for BoxyCharm. So because I know that a lot of my followers. Um, and my 4F family, hi, are uh, based in America and Canada. Um, I put a post up saying, if anybody's got one and doesn't want it, please let me know because I would love to, to get my hands on it and have a play. Now, I was fully intending to reimburse them, at the very least, the postage. Um, and then one of my lovely 4F family messaged me, Shari and said, funnily enough, I was just putting it in the box for you when I saw your post. And I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. And obviously I inboxed her my address, because at the moment I haven't got a PO box, because over here it costs a damn fortune to have a PO box. Um, and I'm not monetized. <laughs> I'm a long way from being monetized. Um, but I said to her, you know, how much do you want for it? And she's like, absolutely nothing. And I'm like, no, no, you can't. I can't expect you to do that. And she's like, no, no, it's fine. I don't want anything for it. Um, and she sent it to me. And it is here. And I opened it up. And there's a lovely note in here for, for me from her. Thank you for yourself and your channel. Love watching what you do and what you will create next. I'm not going to read the rest of this because it's a personal letter to me. But, Shari, thank you so much, my darling. <clears throat> it's even got all the original BoxyCharm packaging in it. 
and she also included a little set of press on nails which next time I'm having a girly night in babysitting the goddaughters or god kids rather uh, I get the feeling it's going to be Auntie Angie can you do my nails for me I can kind of see that coming but the item that I was most excited about is this and it's here and it is absolutely even more pretty in person than the pictures show and I'm currently reflecting light upon my ceiling and distracting myself this is just a stunning palette and I'm going to have fun playing with this Shari, I cannot thank you enough for sending me this thank you so so much it really does mean so much that you were happy to send me this in the first place and then not letting me pay you girl really <laughs> seriously though I, I will treasure this and I can promise you even when this is way too old and stops performing I am still going to keep it this is going nowhere from my collection ever right uh, this is still a teaching channel <clears throat> so I am going to zoom you in in a minute chat through the difference between um, hooded lids and deep set eyes uh, but because this is a teaching channel and because of my chronic pain I blend a lot slower than most people I talk you through each stage so that you can easily follow on if this is going too slowly for you there is a speed widget up there please feel free to use it I have done swatches of this if I remember I will stick them in here now probably going to forget I'm probably just looking at fresh air now well, I'm looking at fresh air now because I haven't edited it in yet. Faces washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Uh, I'm trying to finish up all the little sample sizes of things I've got this year. So this is the Becca First Light Priming Filter that I'm using. And obviously my antiperspirant primer over the top, more details of that in the film, in the description box, along with all of my um, discount codes. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Oh, oh, it's difficult to stretch forward today. I'm on the struggle bus, folks. Right, on my eyes is my usual Crow and Pebble primer. They do not ask me to talk about them every time. I talk about them because it's the best damn primer I've ever used. Um, not sponsored. I do have a discount code with them, which is very lovely of them, um, but I don't earn from it. I just, I get pebbles, because it's Crow and Pebble, I get pebbles that I can offset against future purchases. So, there we go. The thing, reason I love that particular primer so much is it goes on dry, it's not sticky. So you don't have to set it, you can blend straight away and you don't have that compromise between wanting the full impact of colour but wanting to be able to blend instantly so right eye shape now <clears throat> I've got deep set eyes and I have the same issues that people with hooded lids get I get transference of color onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm wearing glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch right in the middle I see so many people with deep set eyes say they've got hooded lids and then they follow all the directions for hooded lids and wonder why their makeup's not turning out the way they want. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of um, this lid that you have a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now 
I'm going to demo on this side because this is the one that I'm blinding so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. If I cover the mobile lid, close my eye, you can see I've got as much if not more lid space that tucks back away out of sight. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see again, there's lid space that tucks away out of sight and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues of transference of colour, etc. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, i.e. if you cannot see any of your mobile lid or any part of your mobile lid, Get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to be. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and brow, so use smaller blending brushes, and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow. You can still add a brow highlight at the end if you need. If you have deep set eyes like myself, then what we have to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which usually is the deepest shade, is just stop, relax our brows, look forward and just check you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different yet somehow similar eye issues. I am using my blush tribe, I have given them a wash. Uh, I didn't lose any um, bristles when I was washing it, although one has come up, I don't know if you can, if I hold it against my hair, can you see, there's one that's a little bit taller now, but it hasn't come out, it's not loose, and these are just as soft as they were when I first got them, which is absolutely bloody awesome. Right, mm -hmm. time to play, I can't wait to get my hands on this, I really can't, right, I'm going to start off with, I think, a Lunar Eclipse, which is the orange. Wow, that's pretty. And there's a reasonable amount of kick up in pan, but just tap back off so you don't get too much, wow, fall out. Crikey, holy Moses. And I'm just going to pop this just on the outer edge here. Tiny little circular motions going in one direction towards the nose and then reversing the direction to come back again. And I'm holding the brush right at the very end so I put as little pressure on as possible. That is lovely. I do have the uh, Lemonade palette by Dominique. So I have used her formula before, but this feels, I don't know whether it's because um, I was still using my MAC paint pot or concealer as my eyeshadow primer when I used lemonade, but this feels somehow, this matte feels creamier, it feels smoother. It's blending much easier than I remember the Lemonade ones blending. But as I said, that could be down to the eyeshadow primer. I'll need to reuse Lemonade with this primer and C. Wow. That's it's a little bit bright, folks, isn't it? Love it. Right. I'm just going to clean the residual orange off of this brush. I use a clean washcloth because I found that colour switches are way, way too harsh on your brushes, especially if you've got natural head brushes. I mean, these are synthetic, but natural head brushes do not fare well with colour switches, so um, I'd avoid them if I were you. Right, that's got all of the orange off. There's a little bit of staining, but... You know, that's what you get with white bristles, sadly. Right, now I'm going to dip into Lucid Dream, which is the pink. Wow. This is a proper... 
It looks like magenta in the pan, but it's definitely hot pink on the brush. And I'm just going to pop that just here. Ooh, this is pretty. Can you tell I'm wanting to play today? I want to use as many colours as possible. Still can't bring myself to do two different colours on different eyes though. I mean that would be ideal because then you could use every single colour in the palette. But I just, I can't. I have tried off camera and I just, it, it just, no, it fidgets me. I can't do it. I'd love to. The closest I came was when I did my um, sort of a, uh, St. Patrick's Day one where I did the liners differently both sides. That's as close as I've managed to come to doing different things on both sides. Now the reason I do circles like this is because I'm 45 and I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. By doing circular movements, you are very, very gently moving that skin around so that you are avoiding getting the tiger striping effect. Now, the only place on me that this doesn't work is on this side, just down here, where I've got super, super deep creasing. Uh, that's from when my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. Um, sadly, the damage didn't show itself until about three or four years ago. Great. But it does, it is proof that you should not pull your eyes around. The skin on your eyes, if you think of it to be as thin as tissue paper and treat it as you would tissue paper, you're much less likely to have issues like this. But I mean, I know, I know women in their 20s that have always been, you know, skinny or thin or normal. I don't know what normal is these days. Um, and they've had loose eyelids just because of genetics. Right, I'm going into Mystic Ice, which is this beautiful teal. And you've probably guessed where this is going before I even put it on there. Now I know that um, Shari said to me a couple of times, the lady that sent me this, she said to me that um, she finds my voice very soothing and there's times that she'll just randomly put a video on just to calm her down. Which I think is fantastic because I, you know, I get panic attacks myself. Um, so if, if my voice can help calm anybody down, then that's fantastic. That's, you know, I started the channel to help people do makeup initially. But if I'm helping with other things as well, then that's bloody awesome. So, it's why I rebranded the channel as an ASMR channel. Because um, I was getting a lot of people saying, oh, can you speed up? Can you talk a bit quicker? Right. Sorry, this is this is the speed that I talk at. I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire. You know, I'm not. If you want someone who talks at a million miles an hour, go and watch Jimmy Chuck. Or use the speed widget. Speed me up. That has blended so nicely. Look at that. Mmm, pretty. Clean this brush off. Hard to believe that was clean when I started, isn't it? <laughs> right, I'm going into zero gravity, which is the stone colour. It's a really nice warm grey, actually. I'm just going to pop this. 
just underneath those colours. I'll do a little bit of a windscreen wiper there, just to make sure I've got it into the crease. And then I do tend to struggle here and here, actually, um, with dry eyelids. So I can sometimes struggle to get pigment to blend out properly there. But yeah, this seems to be doing fine. Obviously I'm tapping the brush off each time because I'd, I'd much rather do lots of little layers and build the colour up and bung on one thick layer and then have to be here blending forever. I really like that. So how's your day been today? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day? You watch me when you're putting your makeup on. Thinking, oh my god, I could never do that for work. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the benefits of being disabled and unemployed or a homemaker. It means you can do whatever the hell you like. And yes, I would not think twice about you know, going out to the shops with my face like this. Well, I've finished the eye look off, obviously. But you know what I mean. Right. Clean this off. Hope you have a good day today. Or if you're at the end of your day and it's not been very good, I hope tomorrow's better. Right. Going down to a smaller brush, and I'm actually going to use all of the mattes in here because I'm going to go into Storm Dust, which is the ready brown. And I'm literally just going to pop that tiny little circles because I still want to see the grey above it just halfway along just to deepen and warm up the lid a little bit and just pop a little bit on the outer edge here that's pretty that's very pretty see of course the benefit with this side is that being blind in it I can actually close it and show you what I'm doing easier but uh, if I closed the other eye I'd be very much relying on muscle memory and Luck. Just give it a bit of a, a nice little blend and then just pop uh, just a little bit on the outer corner of the mobile lid there. Just to add a little bit of definition to the eye. I like that. I do like that. I like that a lot. This is fun. This is huge fun. Right. Got my Jeffrey Morphe lip brush. The JS24, obviously never going to a pressed pigment with a wet brush. I've told you this I don't know how many times. So I am going to go into, I think because I've got such bright colours up here, I'm going to go into black matter. Mm. Look at that. And I'm just going to wet the brush. Dry the ferrule off and apply this to my mobile lid. I am um, normally the first time I'm using a palette, I won't do a cut crease, I, I won't put down concealer or whatever. 
because I like to see how opaque the actual shadows are because obviously some shadows are designed to be a topper, some are designed to be full opacity and that is stunning I'm just going to dry the brush off so I'm not going back in with a wet brush and I'm going to do the same on the other eye I think her um, formula for her shimmers has changed certainly this one has anyway um, because in lemonade I noticed that they got hard pan very quickly whereas this seems more of a, a crumbly texture than a very oil filled one right as I said I do have to stretch this out as you can see from the tiger striping there if I don't do this I get loose pigment filling up in the deep creases and not being blended on like I've just done there and then I end up with it cascading down my face during the day which is not good oh, do you know what I really am liking this Right, I'm going to pause you while I go and put some foundation on and whatnot, and then I'll be back to finish off this eye look. Now for you my darlings, there will be no delay. For me however, I've got to wait a little while before I can talk to you again. Hello, I am back. I really love this. Right. I'm going to go in with a storm dust on this flat brush that I showed you earlier and I'm just going to run that along the lower lash line like so And then this is my favourite brush, this is my Tarte Graveyard Girl palette brush. It's flat top but it's chunky so it's great for getting up under those lashes. And I'm going to go into Zero Gravity, which is the grey, and just really lightly buff that along just to soften and neutralize the bright orangeness of that brown and kind of tie in the deeper shade that I've used on the lid I really love this palette get the feeling this is going to get played with an awful lot <laughs> Right, this is uh, just an old lip brush that I bought from eBay about a decade ago. I'm going to go into Eternal Light. I'm going to pop that just around the tear duct and bring it down to blend in to the colours I've got going underneath my eye. Now, oh, let's work under the brow bone. Oh, yes, it will. Yeah, this is a, a less opaque, this is more of a topper shade, I think. But it's great for brow bone highlight and in a corner. Right, my darlings, I am going to pause you for one last time. 
I'm going to chuck some mascara on, choose some lippy, do something with my hair. Back with my final look. The hair's having a moment to itself today. I haven't put any highlight on. It's most unlike me. Right, the mascara is my Barry M. That's how I roll mascara. The lippy is actually one that I got off of um, AliExpress. And it's called Kiss Proof. Anyone recognising the packaging they're duping? Yes. This is actually one of the highlights that I got from AliExpress, the Hojo, which is the... It's made to look like the Amrezy highlight. Obviously I've got it in white, but they do do it in the same shade as the Amrezy. But the Amrezy highlight is basically the same shade as Jeffrey's Sarcophagus, and all I've got a huge one of those, so little point. Um, this Kiss Proof one did come in a box, and it's shade number seven. Innovative, revolutionary, new formula. The first to create zero damage lip. Okay then. So. What do I think of this? I bloody love it. Um, like I said, I need to retry her lemonade palette using my Chrome Pebble Eye Primer to see whether it is actually a different formula because the mattes felt so much more creamy. They blended together so easily and I know for a fact that her shimmers are a different formula because they did not go hard pan at all. Um, and you can see there's, there's absolutely no hard pan on either of the two shades that I used. So that is very good. Um, Shari, thank you again darling for sending me this. I absolutely adore it. I hope you like the look that I came up with. Admittedly, it's a little bit bright. It's not something everybody would wear to the shops on a Wednesday afternoon. Um, actually, it's not Wednesday afternoon at all today. It's Friday. Hey, Friday. Um, but I will be using this again, and um, I'll probably try doing something most people would consider more wearable. But I just, I wanted to play with all the colours. You know what I'm like. If I get something that intrigues me and is very colourful, I'm like a kid in a sweet shop. Yeah, yeah that's, that's just how it goes. Right. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. If you're going to be uh, brave enough to hit the dislike button, grow up here, tell me what you didn't like. There's no point in hitting dislike and not telling me what you didn't dislike because how am I meant to improve? Constructive comments welcomed. Um, if you are a member of the 4F family, please check you are still subscribed, even if I'm still in your news feed because people are still being unsubscribed. I got unsubscribed from Shane Glossin and I had the damn notification bell rung. So. I know it's definitely happening. Um, if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it this far, you must have liked something. Uh, I don't always go quite so wild with the eye looks. I've got a lot of other films you can check out if you wanted to see some of the, again, more traditionally wearable looks. Um, but it would be awesome if you two would like to join the 4F family it's super easy, you just hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, tell them you want all notifications, jump through flaming hoops, sign your life away, and then maybe, just maybe, YouTube will send you a link when I upload another video. 
Right, my darlings, that's all for me for now. Have I got lipstick on my teeth? Yes, I bloody have. Why didn't you tell me I had lipstick on my teeth? Oof. Right. Now, all that remains for me to say, my darlings, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.